what to car chases, Greek mythology, highway signs, 10-year-old slinkies, and game film all have in common? They're all essential pieces for creating a powerful signature talk to share with your audience and grow your impact and income. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the exact process for building out your signature talk from blank page to applause on stage. Hi, I'm John Cook. I'm the founder of Keynote Content, helping clarify your message so you can elevate your impact and income. And if you're a coach or consultant, some other type of advisor, you need a strong signature talk. Now, this is your featured talk that you can share at conferences, breakout sessions, virtual summits, wherever else your audience spends their time. And I've worked with over 900 speakers one-on-one -on -one to develop their signature talks. Everything from brainstorming talk ideas to researching the topics to creating outlines, scripting, critiquing videos of the talks, just even being the guy in the back of the room or maybe just off stage who I'm following along with your slide deck through the entire talk. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through every part of the signature talk build out process that I use from blank page to applause on stage so you can create a clear, compelling signature talk that you will love to deliver. And whether you're brand new to speaking or maybe even speaking for a little bit and you wanna go all in, or you're a seasoned presenter who's ready to refine your entire signature talk creation process, this video is for you. Are we gonna cover outlining? Yes. Are we gonna cover story structure? Yes. Are we really gonna talk about Hollywood script writing and Greek mythology and highway signs and 10 year olds and slinkies and game film? Yes to all of the above. Well, let's start with one big idea. This is storytelling 101, but it's still surprising to me how many speakers, even seasoned speakers, who are paid 15,000, even $25,000 for their talks, they fall into the trap of having two or three main ideas inside the same talk. Choose one big idea. If you're not sure which idea to choose, let's say that you have three ideas that you like all three ideas. Which one do you choose? Pick the one that you believe would be the most meaningful of the three for you to talk about. Which idea, which topic are you most inspired to share right now? Start with that idea. That's your one big idea. Now, you've probably heard about speakers that are creating a new talk every time that they're booked to speak. And that might even be your experience. But after working with that many speakers, I guarantee you don't have to create a new talk every time you're booked to speak. Let go of that pressure. I've discovered that there are only three different types of talks that speakers need to develop. The first talk, this is your manifesto talk or your mission talk, your purpose talk. Well, same idea, different names. This talk is all about why you do what you do, why it matters, and the change that you wanna see and maybe ignite in the world around you. Your manifesto talk is all about communicating your purpose. It's talking about your origin story and what makes you different. If you're just starting out, your first talk needs to be your manifesto talk, your mission talk. I created a video walking you through the other two types of talks that you need to create as a speaker. The link's in the description below. You can watch that after this video. But for now, don't overthink this. I like to say, this isn't rocket surgery. Whatever type of signature talk that you need to create, choose one big idea and put the rest of your signature talks, put that, those ideas into your drafts folder somewhere. Once you have your one big idea, it's time to create your golden thread. Now, in Greek mythology, there's the story of Ariadne. She's the lover of Theseus. And Ariadne and Theseus, they travel to the island of Crete, where Theseus tries to enter this winding labyrinth to slay the Minotaur. It's an amazing story. And Ariadne, she gives Theseus a sword and a ball of thread that he unwinds as he travels through the labyrinth. And Theseus uses this thread to go through the labyrinth and he slays the Minotaur, and then he retraces his way by winding up the thread all the way out, and he's reunited with Ariadne. And many now refer to this thread as Ariadne's golden thread. And it's a concept that we can bring into your signature talk. What's the one clear, compelling idea, the one big idea that you wanna communicate? That singular idea needs to be tied to this golden thread for your audience to follow through every step of your signature talk. It's a chance to lead your audience with that one big idea. Every part of your introduction, your main content, your takeaways, your action steps, and especially your close needs to be tied to that golden thread all the way back to that one big idea. So if I'm giving a talk about how to be a better dad, my one big idea is to show up more for my kids. But the golden thread all throughout that is show up more for your kids throughout the day. Show up more for your kids by putting down your phone when they're around. Show up for your kids by being at events and places that matter to them. Soccer games, plays, musicals, after school activities, whatever matters to your kids, that's where you can show up more. You can cheer them on, you can be their biggest fan. The big idea, to show up more for your kids. The golden thread, the themes all the way through that are about showing up throughout the day, 
show up at being fully present, and showing up at places and events that matter to them. I have four kids, and I guarantee that is a, th a talk I can give right now is to show up being fully present for each of my kids in a way that matters to them. But if an idea doesn't support that, that one big idea, get rid of it, take it out of your golden thread. You don't have to delete that idea forever, just store it, again, in that drafts folder so you have your one big idea. What's the one concept, the one idea that the signature talk is about? Then we add your golden thread, like an outline that would keep the same focus and theme all the way throughout from open to close. But now it's time to start putting the actual pieces of your signature talk together. A quick caveat, you don't have to use all these elements in your signature talk, all the ones that we're gonna cover. But I've found that many of the strongest talks that I've experienced include most, if not all, these elements that we're going to cover in the next few minutes. My palm hit my face so hard, I, I, I bet you could hear the smack from across the rest of the auditorium. I thought I left a bruise. He did it again. I could see their smiles just slowly fading. I could see people begin leaning back. And after a moment or two, I saw one, two people, five people, 10 people, they just start sliding out their phones, checking social media, completely checking out from the speaker. What did he do that ended up in me face palming myself and him losing his audience? He started by introducing himself for over four minutes from the main stage in front of a thousand people. I cringe anytime I see a speaker start the talk by introducing themselves, by thanking the event planner. That's, that's always good to thank the event planner. We'll get to that later, but then sharing a bit of your background. That's the fast track to snoozeville for your audience. Giving your CV at the start of a talk will chloroform your audience's attention. So how do we fix that? For the start of your signature talk, we need to take a page from Hollywood script writing. What do many of the best action movies all have in common? They start with a car chase. Sometimes it's a literal car chase, other times it's a high stress, explosive opening scene and you're pushed right into the middle of the action. And I've connected with multiple Hollywood script writers and the constant theme from the beginning is to put your audience in the middle of the action as soon as possible. Even at the start of this video, I mentioned some wild, seemingly unconnected details like Greek mythology and car chases, highway signs and more to start catching your attention. That's the currency of connection is attention. Instead of starting at the beginning of a story, start at the most interesting part right before the best part. What would that look like? Instead of talking about how your business started to fail, give your audience the experience of being on that phone call with your accountant where your accountant's telling you you are completely out of money. That is a gut punch call for anybody to receive. Get that tension, that emotion right there. Let's say that you were in a life-changing car accident. Instead of getting in the car, talk about standing on the sidewalk covered in glass while the ambulance arrives on the scene. Well, let's say that you won a national competition. Don't talk about the prep leading up to it. Talk about the moment that the judge smashed that golden buzzer, the confetti starts raining down out of the rafters, and the audience is erupting in celebration. Start with a car chase. Don't start with getting in the car. And most importantly, don't give an ending to that story. Tell that story up to a certain point let the tension build, let the angst be there, and then transition to the second part. First part of your signature talk, that's putting your audience in the middle of a car chase. Don't resolve that story. Instead, switch to the second part of your talk, which is giving your street cred. This is the part where you introduce yourself. You thank the event planner, always thank the event planner, and share a little bit about your background. So if I'm speaking at a live event, I like to couch my introduction this way. Well, I've met some of you already, but in case we haven't met yet, so what does that do? Is it lets people subconsciously know that there are others in this room who already know me and they can vouch for why I'm on this stage. Remember, you're still in the early stages of building trust with your collective audience in that, in that type of event. We want your credibility to build cognitive trust, your connections to build relational trust, your stories to build emotional trust, and your content to build actionable trust. Four types of trust. In the street cred section, as your, it's your second section, it isn't about sharing all of your accomplishments, all about your awards, everything about your family, about your dog. Keep it short, under two minutes, but ideally less than 30 seconds, if at all possible. And only share what gives you the right type of street cred for the audience right in front of you. Who are you? Why do you deserve to be on this stage? And what background validates that belief? And as soon as we're done with sharing your street cred, it's time to add on ribs and signposts. The thing about driving down the highway, you see signs for this upcoming exit, uh, signs showing you how far away the next town or city is, and sometimes there are even digital signs that show you how many minutes it's going to take to get from where you are to the next city or town due to construction or traffic or other factors, including weather. Your signature talk needs on-ramps, 
and signposts. On ramps, these are call outs or specific mentions that are inside your talk to help a certain section or demographic of your audience find their place inside your talk content. It's a specific phrase or maybe it's a detail that you share where a group of people can say, that's where I am, that describes me. So what's an example of an on-ramp? Well, I already showed you three types of on-ramps towards the beginning of this video. Whether you're brand new to public speaking or you've been speaking for a little bit and you want to go all in and you, or you're a seasoned presenter who's ready to refine your entire signature talk process, this video's for you. Did you catch that? There are three distinct on-ramps in that small section. The first one, if you're brand new to public speaking, it specifically mentions speakers who are new, who are just figuring this all out. The second on-ramp, it's for speakers who've been maybe presenting for maybe a few years or so, but there's a twist. This on-ramp, it isn't just for experienced speakers. I wanna connect with speakers who are experienced and who have the desire and drive to level up their talks. That may be you, that's why you're watching this. But what was the third on-ramp? I mentioned this video is also for seasoned presenters who are ready to refine their signature talk process. Pat Quinn, he does a brilliant job of showing on-ramps and signposts, and I give him credit for how well that he helps speakers add those on-ramps and those signposts, and he, he helped me out a lot when I was first starting out. Pat Quinn is incredible, I like to give him credit. So those are on-ramps, but what are signposts? A signpost inside a signature talk is a specific time or structure-specific mention that lets your audience know Here's what you can expect over the rest of this talk. A signpost could be me saying, over the next 13 minutes, I'm gonna share with you this. Or you could say, today we're gonna to talk about this detail, this detail, and this third detail. Or it could be a journey of some type. In the next 35 minutes, we're gonna cover the entire process of how to build, plant, maintain, and harvest your raised bed garden. So even if you've never tried planting before, or you don't have a green thumb, or you're a weekend warrior who loves digging in the dirt and carrying around buckets of tomatoes, this is for you. Did you catch those on-ramps? I tagged those at the end of that signpost. You can mix and match different types of signposts and on-ramps, so try, try a few different ways to see what feels the most natural for you. Whatever way you wanna add in these on-ramps and these signposts, it's all about setting expectations so your audience, especially the more um, type A detail-oriented audience members, that they can follow along with you every step of the way. That brings us to the biggest section of your talk, which is your content. Now, you're likely used to the three-point outline. That's the point one, point two, point three. It's classic, right? Maybe you do have, instead of three points, maybe you have two points. Maybe you have seven points, five points, whatever the number is. Maybe you're trying to cover your coaching framework. It has 17 points inside your coaching framework. That's a lot, it's way too many. So you're trying to figure out which points do I include? They all matter to me, I love them all equally. I created another video where I walk you through how to fit your coaching framework inside your signature talk. So if you have three, five, seven, 12 steps inside your coaching framework, the link's in the description below if you wanna watch that next to figure out how to fit that framework inside your signature talk. The point of this section is to think of your content as flexible and memorable. So think of a slinky toy. It's not a complex design, it's just a kind of a corkscrew metal or maybe it's a plastic shape that compresses into a solid coil, but then you can stretch that slinky, you can spin several steps on the staircase, you can watch it go down and down and down. It's, it's so fun to be able to do that. But how long is a slinky? It can stretch and compress to almost whatever length that you need. The same is true for your content. You maybe have three main points, but if you're crunched for time, how can you compress your talk content into a shorter time frame? Maybe you don't have 30, 45 minutes, maybe you have uh, 10 minutes, maybe you have five minutes, maybe you have 60 seconds, maybe there are technical difficulties and now instead of having 45 minutes, say, I gotta do this 25 minutes, where do I cut content? It's all about how you can compress or expand your main content to fit the moment. Your main content is the easiest place to cut or add time to your signature talk, depending on the venue and the crowd, the technical difficulties, whatever the experience is. And I coach our clients to be able to give your signature talk in 60 seconds, in five minutes, in 15 minutes, and 45 minutes. Same talk, but expanded or compressed to whatever the time frame is to fit that moment. You have your main content now, and it's time to land the plane. What is the one action step that you want your audience to take because of your talk? Is it signing up for your coaching program? Is it making a lifestyle change? Is it changing a mindset belief? Where I see so many speakers get tripped up is having two or three or five action steps at the end of your talks. Visit this website, call out that one friend, forgive them, take that vacation. As much as possible, invite your audience to take only one step at the end of your talk. You have your one big idea, you have your golden thread, you have one action step. Take one step at the end of your talk. If you do wanna include multiple action steps, 
give a focus step for each on-ramp that you mentioned at the start of your talk. So let's say that you're a brand new speaker and you're just starting out. The best step you can take right now is to identify your one big idea for your manifesto talk. What's the one big idea of why you do what you do and why it matters? That's your one step. If you've been presenting for a while and you're, you're ready to level up, your next step is to do a complete review of your most popular signature talk. Where are there gaps in your talk? What pieces seem maybe out of place or not as strong as they could be? Or maybe it's the, those are good, how can I double down on that? But if you're a seasoned speaker who's looking to refine your signature talk, your next step is to watch the game film of your most recent talk. That's hard to do sometimes. Be gracious but honest with yourself about how you move, how you sound, and how you look on the stage. If you want to get better, game film is the most under-leveraged resource for speakers, even stage warriors who have been speaking for 15, 20, 25 plus years. As much as possible though, give one action step for your audience to take, just one step. It's focused, it's intentional, it's relevant, but only one step. So how do you finish your talk? By closing the loop. Let's go back to that opening car chase section. You brought your audience right into that moment, whether it was recreating that phone call, that conversation, whatever that moment in time was that was most impactful. If you built a strong golden thread, your audience, they're still tied to that opening story. You left your audience hanging on that story. So what's the second part of that story? That's where you close the loop. It means that you resolve that opening story. About five years ago, I discovered a plane crash in the mountains of Colorado where I live. I also discovered what was left of the pilot. And that's the opening story for one of my signature talks. I, I talk about being the first person in the world to find the pilot's body. How there was very little sound in the entire mountain valley. It was me and the plane crash and the pilot's body. And it was a sacred place. And I close the loop by talking about the phone call that I had with the pilot's son-in-law about two weeks later. How the pilot was flying to sell his plane and he was ready to enter retirement. He had all these dreams, all these plans about where he wanted to go, what he wanted to do, but he didn't really share the details of those dreams with a lot of people. And in the end, his dreams died with him. And when I got home that night, after discovering that plane crash, I hugged my wife and kids, and then I started writing down all the dreams that I want to share while I still have a chance. It's because seeing somebody lose their dreams forever, it needs to be a wake-up call. It was a wake-up call for me. And you might be watching this with a whole book of dreams and plans that you'd love to do someday, who are you sharing those plans with? Who else knows your dreams? Who can, who can you share those ideas and those memory-making moments with right now who will celebrate those dreams with you and after you? Creating a signature talk isn't about creating a 30 to 45 minute talk to help market your business and just get yourself in front of more people. It's about harnessing the most powerful message that you may ever hold with the greatest potential impact of your life. Don't be like that pilot whose dreams died with them. Make your life extraordinary with a signature talk that can help change the world for good. And if you followed along every step of the way, we started with one big idea. We turned that idea into a golden thread that we could weave and pull through every part of your signature talk all the way from opening to close. We opened with a car chase. You brought your audience immediately into the middle of the story and you left your audience hanging there in kind of the angst of that story by transitioning to your street cred. In less than two minutes, ideally 30 seconds or less, you shared why you're on that stage with the credibility, the expertise to build the cognitive, relational, actionable, and the emotional trust. We followed that up with on-ramps and signposts and let your audience know here's where you can find yourselves in my talk and what to expect for the rest of our time together. And that brought us to our main content, which you can expand or compress like a virtual slinky. You give your audience one next step. Do this next, not five, not seven, not even two or three next steps, one next step. And we close the loop at the end by resolving the car chase story from the beginning of your signature talk. And that's how you build a powerful signature talk that you will love to deliver. But can I give you three bonus tips? If you want to have a powerful signature talk, you really want to level it up, you already have the structure in place, how can you test drive it a little bit? The first tip is to give it the 10 year old test. Can you explain what your talk's about and why it matters to a 10 year old? That's called passing the 10 year old test. So why a 10 year old? Because if a 10 year old can understand what you're saying the first time that you say it, that's the preferred comprehension level of your average Fortune 500 decision maker. C-suite, SVP, that's the preferred comprehension level. It's not about your audience's ability to comprehend what you're saying. It's about your audience's ability to not get lost in the complexity 
because everyone in your audience has dozens of other ideas and distractions all in their mind. Now you may be thinking, John, I, I don't have kids. I don't have a 10 year old who's living in my house or somebody can just ask, hey, what do you think of this? What do you do? What you can do is you can use AI to analyze your concept. Write out your one big idea, write out your golden thread, the main points, and enter it into ChatGPT or some other type of AI tool that can analyze your writing. Ask that AI program to analyze their reading comprehension level of your content based on the Flash reading analysis gauge and give you a Flash comprehension score. It's gonna give you a numerical score. And if your score is over 7.0, let's say the great, it's 7.0, it's likely too complicated or verbose of an explanation. What does the 7.0 stand for? It stands for grade seven or seventh grade. You really want it to be about 4.0, maybe 5.0. So you can ask ChatGPT or whatever platform that you're using to rewrite your content for a fifth grade or maybe a fourth grade reading level and see how it sounds from there. That leads to the second bonus tip. I call this your one line teaser. People ask you, hey, you're speaking, uh, at one o'clock, what's your talk about? And that's a trap that victimizes so many different speakers. A natural first response is to just launch into your talk. You start giving your talk. That's a, that's a rookie mistake. Let's clear that out here. Spoiler alert, this person didn't ask for your talk. They asked what your talk is about. How do you not fall into that trap? How do you not make that rookie mistake? You work up a one line teaser. In one or two sentences, what's your signature talk actually about? You can use this formula if you need to. It's about how a specific group of people with a specific challenge can go from lower status reality to newer, more fulfilled reality and all without, and you list out sacrifices or changes that you'd expect that group to have to make that other people say that you have to make. So what does that sound like? My signature talk is about how so many coaches and consultants have dreams about creating that life that they want, but they're stuck not knowing how to talk about what they do. I help them get clarity on what matters, how to stand out from other coaches or consultants in their space and create the impact and income that they crave without sacrificing their sanity, their relationships, or their health. It's simple, it's easy to remember, and it gives a bit of a teaser for the right person. So the third and final bonus tip, we have to talk about game film. If you're not recording and watching the video of your signature talk, you're missing out on an incredible gold mine of growth for you as a speaker. And I get it, it's uncomfortable watching yourself on the screen. I sometimes hate watching myself after giving a talk, but the pain and discomfort are worth the work. And if you haven't watched a lot of video of you speaking on stage, or maybe you haven't watched a recording of you speaking for a while now, be gracious with yourself. Focus on your voice, your movements, and your speed of presentation. I recently had a speaker coach, he's Ross Kimball, he's a great friend of mine. We've known each other for about 15, 20 years now. He does amazing work with people for getting their, their talks together, their presentation style, how they look and feel on stage, and gave me some great feedback on my content that I needed to slow down about five, maybe 10% of my pacing. I made that shift and it feels amazing to move at a more deliberate pace. So focus on your pacing, how you look, and what you say on stage. Turn down the volume. Just focus on your body language and your movement. Turn up the volume, don't look at the screen. Focus on how your voice sounds, the inflections, the intonations. And then look at the content, maybe have it transcribed and say, here's exactly what you're saying. Are there gaps, are there filler words? Um, uh, uh, uh take those out, you will strengthen the quality of your content. And if you like what I shared today, please give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe to catch more of my videos about clarifying your message so you can elevate your impact and income. As a coach or consultant, you likely have your own coaching framework or your proprietary process. Some people call this your method, your pathway, your model, your framework. It's the same concept, but different names. And one of the best decisions that you can make as a coach is creating a signature talk that walks through your coaching framework. But how does that work? Where I created a video showing you the three best ways to fit your coaching framework inside a signature talk. So hit play on this next video. I'll see you there.